this is called a sword pyramid. This is uh, just found in Norfolk, England in August of this year, 2021. Almost perfectly intact. It's only missing that one little piece that you can see right above the center. And called a sword pyramid, what this thing does is it's a medallion that there are two of. The one's on your pommel or hilt of your sword and the other one's onto your scabbard or sheath that you have your sword on on the clasp at the top of it actually and there's thought to have been a band of leather that goes around both of these and it attaches your sword so when riding a horse like these ancient Anglo-Saxons were known for your sword doesn't hop up and down or eventually hop up and wedge and eventually hop out of your scabbard and you look down and you don't have your weapon anymore somehow if you were you know just a lowly person you'd have a piece of leather strapped over it and that would be your safety like a safety on a gun if you will if you were a little more wealthy you might have something that was done in metal with a button hasp on it and a lot of these they don't know how they were attached because they don't have the leather anymore it rotted away but some people have decided you know these things are very small. They're one, this is a one centimeter cube made into a pyramid with the top of the pyramid knocked off like you see on a dollar bill. And so it's also thought that that strap attached to the other, attached to this one, might go around it in a way that a guitar strap goes around where there's a slit cut into it and it would thump over this and then be caught on it and not be able to move from that point. Other people say that that would still allow it to move slightly in its, in its hilt, and they would probably wrap the thing around. Either way, this is kind of comically thought of as being a safety for your sword because you'd have to actually take this thing and clip it off. It would effectively be like whenever you unbuckled your gun when you let somebody know uh, it's fixing to happen here and you'd have to unbuckle it. If you unbuckled your sword, you'd be like, I about had it with what's going on here or show that you're very aware of what's fixing to go on if things don't change quickly what's so cool about these is the more fancy ones of course and more elite people had ones that were inlaid like this of gold and inlaid with garnets and if you look closely you can see like in the middle of the pyramid there on the top where it's scratched with fine fine lines like in a gold foil and put below that stone so not only does the stone stone see through like a stained glass window and look beautiful but there's a faceting to it by that effect rather than a faceted stone effect like we think of a diamond today and so on in fact the shape of the thing is a diamond faceted object they're filling it in In fact, my grandmother's class ring had a garnet on it, and it was see-through and smooth. It wasn't faceted, and down below was foil like this, like on the right that you see just of it, and you can kind of make it out on there. If you look at the four around there, the light's not quite catching it, but if the light does catch, it gets through and gets this gleam, and these lines shine back through it. One would think that they would just maybe take one piece of that garnet as a trapezoid and a solid piece rather than to put the little gold things in the in-between. But the actual intricateness has to do with itself even more. It shows you the craftsmanship. If you look closely at this, someone had to take these garnets and file them to a point that they exactly fit in this tightly. And then they mush the gold back over rimming on the edge of it and it holds on to it there's no little tongue clasps that go on like on around gemstones we think today it's all pretty much smeared and held in in that way just slightly it shows you why that they lose some pieces to this one time you know at times also they only found this one and in looking around, they didn't find the other. Or that little piece of garnet there, which maybe whenever it hit the ground, you think if they're riding on horses, 
and so on. It might have been kicked a few times and so on to end up even in the state where it was and stepped on underground, rained on a few times, gone to time, and then buried. Because this was found by a metal detector again. Amazingly, if you think about something one centimeter like this, if it was made out of bronze or something, it had been doubtful that the metal detector would even show it up. And some of these things were simplistic like buttons. Other things were real fancy like this. Uh, at the very end of this, I'll tell you uh, how I used one in a D&D &D campaign for part of a thing. It'll be just something interesting and kind of a side deal. I don't want to go off on it now. So let's look into this. This sword harness pyramid with rare gems unearthed in England. A UK metal detectorist has unearthed a rare 1,400-year-old Anglo-Saxon sword harness pyramid crafted in gold and garnet from India or Sri Lanka. What? Uh, yeah, it's well known that they had a trade all the way through to then. And it has to do with ancient Aryans and so on before this time, well before. And this also shows you of them knowing of these people before they ever became the Anglo-Saxons over in the West that we know of today. This tiny bejeweled treasure was discovered in April in 2021 in Breckland, Norfolk, East England, by amateur archaeologist and metal detectors Jamie Harcourt. The rare artifact dates to 560 to 630 AD and was used to hold a warrior's sword in its scabbard while riding. It is thought to have been lost by a wealthy warrior serving an Anglo-Saxon king at the time when the modern English country of Norfolk was still part of the Kingdom of East Anglia. So at that time. Sword harness pyramids usually come in pairs and they are pinned down by two leather clasps that stop swords from jumping out of their scabbards when on horseback. However, the exact way in which the pyramids were attached to these swords and scabbards is not clear because the leather usually rots away. Having been crafted between Having been crafted between 560 and 630 AD, the sword harness pyramid was functional when Norfolk was still part of the powerful Anglo-Saxon kingdom of East Anglia that wasn't fully absorbed into the kingdom of England until 918 AD. So here's another look at it here and a close-up of it here on the right and in there you can see the light catching through the garnets that are on there. The pyramid was just over a centimeter square at the base and was used to secure swords into their scabbard. So much like a four-sided dice if you ever see those in, in the game. A rare but not unique sword harness pyramid. The sword harness pyramid is highly ornate and would have sparkled in the sun when attached to the ends of two leather bands and wrapped around the hilt of a sword. Finds the liaison officer at Northrop's coroner's office. Helen Geek, and she told BBC News that finding just one pyramid was like losing one earring. So, being a lady, she can connect it to that. It's like, what? Because it takes two, usually. It's very annoying. The complex, multifaceted garnets that decorate the pyramid were individually cut when ground into the required shapes. And while this is certainly a rare discovery, it's not really unique. Discover and metal detectorist Jamie Harcourt told Treasure Hunting that the fine represented his first post-lockdown outing and that it was the fine of a lifetime for him. I'm sure it was. However, he pointed out that the artifact is a very similar to those examples recovered during the world-famous 1939 excavation at Sutton Hoo, the Staffordshire Hoard. And uh, we've talked about that quite a bit. I'm sure you all have seen it. Here's one example of that. And you can see how much more intricate that was. Uh, you can also notice that the little inlays that are on it in each side might in the very center of it look a little bit like a cat's face. But if you took that idea out of it, what we're looking at is a step pyramid here and a step pyramid here. And this is the sun. And then there are four seasons that go around it and stuff. And people have made up all this stuff about it. But look how intricate and how delicate this is and how it wraps around to the top of the pyramid, if you will, and that there's extra blue, I don't know if this is lapis lazuli, I believe so, laid in on each side in diamond patterns, 
in little bands with gold there, but then also in the very crest top of the pyramid, it has a perfectly made micro chessboard. Just, just amazing. The famous Staffordshire hoard contains five pairs of sword harness pyramids, and according to the official website, these elaborate and high-quality decorations indicate the owner was an elite warrior, especially one like this. You can see the levels of this situation. Measuring only 0.4 inch by 0.4 inch, so it's really one centimeter cubed, and weighing in just at three grams, the gold mount is of exceptionally fine quality and delicate, of course with incredibly intricate foil work on the back sides, giving you that gleam effect and the scratched in effect. Similar to the examples gathered from Sutton Who, Geek suggests that this one also belonged to someone of this upper class. Lords would have been careening about the countryside on their horses and they'd lose them, added the fines officer. She told the BBC that the owner was somebody in the entourage of a great lord or an Anglo-Saxon king and that he would have been a lord or thane, which is a medieval nobleman, who might have found the, his way into the history books. Not even sure who he is, but it's possible that it could be someone that is even named. There's no initials or anything, and one thing that you thought would might happen a little bit later is that initials would be in that top pommel, right? And you'd see two little initials in there, or one, and this would designate who it was, but this is before any time like that's happening. Looking into the parts which construct the hole, the gold is used to form the pyramid mount which have been sourced in Britain. But the same cannot be said for the red garnets which were actually imported from India or Sri Lanka. Helen Geek noted that the gemstones had traveled a distance of more than 5,000 miles, underscoring the un incredible global trade occurring at that time. Traditionally, Sri Lanka was known as Ratna Dwipa, the gem island. Explorer Marco Polo wrote that the island had the best sapphires, topaz, amethysts, and other gems in the world. Middle Eastern and Persian traders began crossing the Indian Ocean to buy gems for trading during the 4th and 5th century. Now this new discovery we have Further evidence of an ancient trading network that channeled rare gemstones all the way from Sri Lanka to India and then to wealthy agriculturists in the Anglo-Saxon England. So here we show a connection, I guess, that's much more far-reaching than people were willing to give credit for. And also it goes on much before this. This is just one of the sparkling moments in that. And of course, this is Anglo-Saxons which are making that breath across and finding, rarely finding their artifacts. But again, like this, just as well as the one that we just found, which is a little less intricate, no less rare of a finding and nothing less of a finding actually. But, uh, so my D and D type thing. What did I do on that? Well, so my characters, I had taken them through a whole bunch of adventures, and they were well familiar with the land that they were in. But then one way of taking all these adventures that I hadn't done before and utilized was to pop them somehow into a distant land they had no idea. My idea was actually that it's on the other side of the world, and that they would project right through the underside of the world effectively teleporting if you will and so they end up in a different place or what they actually find out is that they ended up in the same place after two or three more <laughs> other adventures happen but it's at a different time so whenever they come back it was at a different time and they didn't recognize it, and something bad had happened, and there was this big sea of glass that was in what would be uh, an area they knew was a desert before, and then they had to find their way back out of that, which involved a Merlin-type character, and they went through a bunch of portals and went through time to different places and positions in time that he had saved on little tablets that were like Sumerian tablets, 
that they had to go through a portal that he would make and go and come back. Got the idea from the Star Trek episode where the guys with the bald head and everything, the ancient wizards there in the library. Yeah, it was very much like that. But what was the deal with the sword pyramids here was that they, uh, in going into one of these towns, they found out a few adventures and through going to the tavern and hearing rumors and stuff that go around, possibilities of what they could go into and find out about that would lead to the adventures in this land that they were in. And we'd already done this a few times a little bit, so they were kind of familiar with what we were trying to do. In the process, um, one of the adventures was there's an old haunted cave that a guy that had stolen a warrior's stuff from long ago that they used to keep in the church there basically as a great warrior there somebody had stolen this or whatever and left and there had been somebody had gone after him but the guy that had gone after him was not trusted in any way in fact they thought that he was the one that had stole it until people said that he went after him and uh that's because he was going to track him down probably try to steal it too and then one lady saw him the first guy running into this cave and this is the haunted cave and nobody will go check it out really so ha 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 last time somebody tried to check it 